So you may think that sharpening or waxing your skis or snowboard may not be for you because it's too difficult or too long, or that you need a special machine. With a few tools and a bit of time, you'll find this procedure is quite approachable for anyone. My name is Shane, a ski technician, and together we'll be looking at how to wax and sharpen. It takes about 30 minutes. It's easy to do, but you need to be meticulous, but it's quite feasible to do on your own. For sharpening, the tools you'll need are a pair of ski vices, an elastic for the ski brakes, an adjustable base edge tool, a file, a sidewall removal tool, an angle block, a stone, a diamond file, a rubber abrasive block, and a rag. Next for waxing, you'll need a waxing iron, universal ski wax, a plastic scraper, a bronze ski brush, a nylon ski brush, and a horsehair brush. Okay, so getting started, uh, first thing I like to do is obviously dress myself, so put on something that protects my clothing, uh, just so to make sure that I'm not getting any ski wax or edges on, on my clothing and, and, uh, and also getting it onto the ski. Uh, we want to get the ski brakes out of the way, so we want to put a nice elastic just to make sure that it's easy to work on the edges and the base. And then before we start, we want to use a nice new uh, ski scraper to make sure that the edges are nice, or the base is nice and flat. If it's not flat, then what you want to do is, is bring it to your local ski shop so that they can put it through the machine to make it nice and uh, nice and flat for you because at home that's not something that we can do ourselves. So the first thing we want to do is work on our base edge. So what we need to do is use our base edge tool with a file. Um, this is particularly good for when we have a concave base and this will make it so that we so that we can get our base edges uh, as flat as possible. So we've put it at 05 already. And what we want to do is just pull towards us, placing it nice and flat on the base and pull all the way along the edge. We'll do it on both sides. <clears throat> So the first thing we need to do after working on our base edge uh, and, our, and verifying that our base is nice and flat, so we're going to start working on our side edges. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, take care of our side walls, because if there's too much material on the side walls, then we're not able to work on our edge effectively. So the first thing we want to do is put the ski into the vise, secure it nice and firmly, and take our side edge removal tool, put it nice and flat on the base, and just pull it towards you, going from tip to tail. Nice and slowly, flip the ski around to both sides, <clears throat> and then do the same thing, put it nice and flat, going from tail to tip, just making sure that we have nothing in our way when working on the edge. So the next step is to work on our side edges. The, this is after getting rid of the sidewall. And so what we want to do is start using our edge block with our file. Um, when a ski comes out of the factory, it's at 90 degrees more or less. And uh, what I recommend is to start off, for most uses, it's good to have uh, at 89. Uh, this gives you a nice good edge hold and uh, doesn't destroy your edges quicker than, the, than it needs to be. We can go all the way to 85. This is good for ski racers that need that really deep, nice edge hold, um, but this prevents the ski from lasting as long as it can. First, we want to work from tip to tail. <clears throat> so we want to switch the ski around. <clears throat> and we're always doing a pulling motion towards you. Um, on the file, there's two directions. So if you pushed on in the other direction, you're going to destroy your edge. So you want to always pull towards you, that way you're working on your edge. And even if you bring it back, you just pull it back lightly. We want to do this all the way down the edge. And you can do this up to five times, depending on how sharp you need your skis to be and how dull they are to be when you begin. Then you want to flip your ski around. You're going to put the bindings facing away from you. And again, putting your tool flat on the edge. Always 
pulling and never pushing. So the next thing we want to do after dealing with our edges uh, is remove the residue that we have left on the edges. It's kind of like a knife. So when you sharpen a knife, it doesn't cut very well after sharpening. So you need to remove the residue in order to make it so that the edge hold is, is, is good. Uh, what we want to do first is clean the base to remove any excess, um, excess material. And we're going to start with the base edge with using the pink stone. And just make it nice and flat, removing this residue because if you don't, you're going to have issues with controlling your ski. So you want to do the base edge first. Put the stone in the same tool that you used on your edges, so the edge block. Again, it's at 89 degrees. Put it nice and flat. And just one passage in the direction, always from tip to tail, in order to remove that residue. After removing the residue with the stone, we'll pass with the diamond uh, the diamond plate and so this is just a it's a finishing stone so that um, you're getting that residue nice and polished before hitting the slopes. We do tip to tail again passing through the base <clears throat> putting it into the tool Making sure it's nice and flat on the base again, going again from tip to tail. You always want to go in the direction of the ski just to make sure that we're running properly. After doing that, take a rag, remove any of the excess material. And then we're going to pass through the abrasive uh, rubber. So this is good because unless you're a professional ski racer, you don't want your edges to be all the way from the top to the bottom. Um, when you initiate your turn, you want to have that little bit of extra play so that when your edge hold is basically between your bindings and not at the tip and tail because you'll have trouble controlling. So what you want to do is basically remove the edge that you've created at the tip, basically about 10 to 15 centimeters just by using the abrasive gum and passing it a few times so that you're breaking that edge a bit and doing the same thing at the tail. And there, that edge is finished. So after we've finished our sharpening process, we want to pass that our waxing. Uh, first off, you just want to verify that your ski doesn't have any holes in it. If it does, you can refer to our other tutorial uh, where we fix, where we teach you how to fix holes. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is just make sure that the ski is in a room temperature environment. So we want to have our ski for a minimum of half a day um, be left in, in room temperature, just so that um, the wax has time to, when we apply the wax, that it, that it penetrates the base. Um, the first thing we want to do is clean the base. So we'll just pass our bronze brush. Clean it off a bit. Take our our, uh, our rag, clean it off. Then we're gonna put a first layer of wax where we're gonna scrape it off um, while it's warm. And this is just to clean off any of the debris that, that we had in the previous sharpening process. So there's multiple types of waxes, uh, blue and green for any cold temperature. And then there's red and, and yellow for any warm temperature scheme. Today, we're gonna be using a universal wax that's good in all of environments. And this is a good choice for if you're if you're having trouble deciding or if you want to put a wax on that'll be used for multiple different uh, different um, skiing environments. Um, you always want to make sure that you're setting your uh, waxing iron to the right temperature. So this is indicated on the box usually. Um, if not, you can always uh, you can always refer to your shop and ask them what to, what temperature to use based on the type of wax that you're using. Today we're using a universal wax. We've set it at 100 degrees. And what we want to do is just melt the wax. Usually put your uh, your waxing iron at an angle so that you're using the corner to kind of guide where you're putting the wax. And I usually do it in an S motion all the way along the ski to get the drips as close to the edges as possible. 
all the way up and down. Give it a good coat. And then lay it out on the ski. You don't want to stay in the same spot because you can risk to burn your base. And this is definitely not a good thing because you might have to throw your ski out in the garbage. Um, the risk is that you, if you heat the base up too much, that you can uh, separate the core from the base or from the top sheet, and then your ski is basically unusable. So we want to get the wax as close to the edges or on the edges as possible. And just get it a nice, good layer of wax so that we're able to clear off any of the debris. We'll pass next with our plastic scraper. Scrape all the wax that we put on. And you can see that some of this wax is pretty dirty still because we we're just taking off any of the debris that's left over from our sharpening phase. We want to try and get off as much of this wax as possible. Okay, so once we've finished our first wax, we can just clean off the rest of the residue of wax that we've put on. And we can start applying our second coat. This coat is going to be our final coat of wax, so we'll just do the same thing. Get it as much wax as we can close to the edges in an S motion. <clears throat> All along the base. And spread it out again to make sure that we have everything covered. This final wax is the wax that you'll leave on for a little bit. Uh, I usually say about minimum an hour, but if you have the time, wax the base the night before you go skiing, or if you're just if you have more time, just leave it overnight so that the wax has time to penetrate the base, and that way it'll last longer until your next the next time that you want to wax your skis. So the first thing once we've uh, let the ski rest for uh, for some time to let it cool down is we're going to start scraping the ski. So we'll use the metal, uh, or not the metal, but the, the plastic scraper. And um, on most plastic scrapers, we have this little notch on the side. And so this is for to remove any uh, any wax on the edges because we don't want wax on the edges. We want the edges to be able to uh, grip the snow when we need it to. So we want to remove this wax. I usually do it on the side like this, so we go on each side of the edge to remove any wax necessary. <clears throat> and also use the side of the of the scraper to remove any wax on the side. Because usually when you're passing the, uh, the iron, there are wax strips that go on the side of the edge as well. You want to remove this. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And on the side of the ski as well. And so now we're just scraping the base wax, get as much of it off as possible with our plastic scraper before brushing. It makes the process much easier. And it's always much easier to push the scraper rather than pull. If you pull, you don't have as much force. So you want to make sure that you're pushing always from tip to tail. Get as much of this wax off as possible. Too much wax makes the ski stick. And too little, it doesn't have the best glide. So. Next step is to brush off the excess wax with our bronze brush. So we'll go from tip to tail again. Really try and get all that excess wax off. Okay. 
Next brush we're gonna use is the nylon brush. This is just to remove any more wax that we have and to get into those grooves. Again, as many passages as you want. The more passages you do, the better the glide. <clears throat> so after we finish scraping, we'll pass on to the uh, bronze brush first. Um, and also in snowboards, I usually go for a rotary brush just because it helps us get a little bit of time because there's much more surface area to cover. Um, so the process just goes a bit quicker and we can get a better finish on it. So after you use a, a, an electric drill with our rotary brushes to get that job done. brush we're going to use is the horsehair brush. This is really to give you the best finish uh, that you can to have an optimal glide at the end of the day. So this is just to really polish the base and get it so that you don't have any problems when your skis gliding on the snow. Now we've finished our first ski. Uh, the brushing and the, the sharpening is all finished. So as you can see, it's a pretty easy process to sharpen and wax your skis. But if you have any hesitations, make sure to contact your local ski shop. They're there to help you and uh, give you any pointers. They can even do your skis for you. Now that the process is done of waxing and sharpening your skis, you can go out and have a good time with your friends and enjoy slopes.